module 12. This is all about introduction to mental illness and developmental disabilities. The goal here is to introduce you as participants to the needs of clients with mental illness or developmental disabilities. Working with clients who have a mental illness can be very challenging for caregivers in large part due to the misconceptions about these conditions that exist in our society. Learning about these conditions, what causes them, and how they affect clients and their families can help caregivers to overcome stereotypes and develop empathy. Caregiver can make a difference in their lives by being there for the individuals and their families with ears. E stands for empathy, A stands for acceptance, R stands for respect, and S stands for support. So now, what is mental illness? It is a problem in the brain that affects how a person thinks, feels, and acts towards others. The result is behavior that is not appropriate for the life situation. Mental illness is a disability because it can affect how a person gets along in life. And what causes mental illness? It says here chemical imbalance in the brain. Heredity. It can be caused by an accident or head injury, emotional trauma, drug or alcohol abuse, or it can be isolation from other people for a long time. Can mental illness be treated? It is yes. We have here the types of mental illness. We have the ARD or anxiety-related disorders, depression, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia. Anxiety means fear or uneasiness or worry. Anxiety-related disorders are when fear or worry don't go away, and it leads to muscle aches, shaking, sweating, dizziness, feeling tired, racing heart, a choking feeling, cold or hot flashes, and dry mouth. And the types of anxiety related disorders, they are phobias, the PTSD or the OCD. Phobias are fear of specific things, example, spider, arachnophobia, riding in an elevator, claustrophobia, and PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. This is caused by traumatic experience like a victim of a violent crime or being in a military combat situation. OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder when you cannot stop doing certain things or thinking about certain things. Let's define depression. Clinical depression is when the feelings become so strong that the person is not able to function in life. Apathy. Apathy is when a person have no interest in doing anything. Depression sometimes is linked to suicide for older people. And what is bipolar disorder? It is also called manic depressive disorder. It is a kind of depression where the person may be very depressed for a while and then become extremely active. And what is schizophrenia? 
This is a brain disorder that affects a person's ability to understand reality, to think, and to communicate clearly. They experience hallucinations, delusions, and they may have slow or repeated movements. And what are the signs of mental illness? It is important to remember that the signs could indicate other problems or illnesses. They may have physical signs, emotional signs, and social signs, wherein their ability to be around with other people is affected. The physical signs of mental illness are as follows. Unable to sleep. Tired and sleeping more than normal. Headaches. Diarrhea. Nausea. And general pain. The emotional signs of mental illness are their mood swings. They're anxious all the time. They experience sadness and they are fearful. They don't know where they're at and they imagine people or events. And the social signs of mental illness are aggression, withdrawal, or lack of interest in people or activities. They are over-dependent on others. They are very suspicious of others or what we call paranoia. They act like a child. Now, as caregiver and home health aides, working with clients with mental illness is a big job. But as we have mentioned a while ago, you can make a big difference in their lives by being there for the individuals and their families with ears. E stands for empathize. A stands for acceptance. R stands for respect. And S stands for support. Empathize. You have to think about how each person feels. And as a caregiver, show that you care. And always make sure that you try to make the person feel better. Accept the person, even if you don't like the way the person acts. Accept the person, even if the person's idea don't seem right. Respect. Avoid arguing and giving advice. And help the clients stay part of their family. Support your client by assisting him or her with daily tasks and personal care. Help him be safe and store things that could hurt them out of their reach. Share what you learned about mental illness with family members. And as a caregiver, you always write down, report any changes you see in how the clients act. Now let's talk about developmental disabilities. The same thing, working with clients who have a developmental disability can be very challenging for caregivers. Due to misconceptions about these conditions that exist in our society, learning about these conditions, what causes them, and how they affect clients and their families can help caregivers to overcome stereotypes and develop empathy. One common misconception is to confuse development disabilities with mental illness. 
participants will learn about how developmental disabilities differ from mental illness. Clients with developmental disabilities may be children or adults. And like all other clients, people with developmental disabilities sometimes need assistance with activities of daily living. Families are more likely to be involved in the care of people with developmental disabilities, whether children or adults. Again, a caregiver can make a difference in their lives by being there for the individuals and their families with ears, empathy, acceptance, respect, and support. What is developmental disabilities? It usually develops before age 22. There may be mental or physical problems or both, and it is a lifelong condition. And what causes developmental disability? It can be brain injury or infections before, during, or after being born. It can be an abnormal genes or chromosomes or very premature birth it can be poor diet and health care or it can be drug use by the mother during pregnancy and that includes drinking alcohol and smoking what are the types of developmental disability first we have autism this is when a person has problems communicating and in interacting with others. It usually before a child turns three and it affects more boys than girls. It can cause a range of problems, including repeating movements, being aggressive, and not being able to relate to people. Other type is cerebral palsy. It is caused by brain damage before or during birth. Cerebral palsy affects muscle control and nerves. The movements may be stiff or sudden and may have problems with speaking. Next is Down syndrome. This is an intellectual disability caused before birth. Physical symptoms are smaller skull, flatter nose, and short fingers. We have intellectual disability or mental retardation. It means mental functioning that is below average. Difficulty learning, communicating, and moving and interacting socially. have another type that is spina bifida when the backbone is not fully developed at birth and part of the spinal cord bulges out. Others use wheelchair for life and have bladder or bowel problems. How can a caregiver assist clients with developmental disabilities and their families? And as we have said with ears and in general you have to assist with ADLs being the clients advocate assist them with managing the home by cooking cleaning shopping and paying bills if applicable assisting the client to go to work if he or she works Assist the client to participate in community activities, education, training, social events, and recreation. 